great. How are you? I'm so oh. happy. Very good. Very good. Very <laughs> feeling very blessed. Yes. Well, first and foremost, congratulations. 20 years later, girlfriends. I know. <laughs> How do you years? I know. We were like, even just saying it sounds crazy. You know, you're like, wow. Yeah. 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 And, and I've known those girls so long. It's I, I was telling my husband once when I was just saying, you know, it's weird to know someone that long because in our industry, we work with people and then you're like, you're on to the next, you know, someone for a week or a, a month. But to know them this long, it's kind of amazing. It's like family, like, you know. No, a absolutely. You guys are our girlfriends. Like you guys, <laughs> you guys are the girlfriends, but you are the culture, the millennials. We've definitely taken over girlfriends and made it and captured it and taken it. In oh, all. that's so good. That's no, so yeah, y'all are y'all are iconic so thank you for all of oh, the thank you <laughs> but uh welcome to where's the buzz tv um how have you been doing i just want to first start off and see like where you are you know a lot of things been going on in the world and also quarantine um you know what's new with you being in the house via pandemic Woo! it has been a rough ride for the whole world right but yeah um we've been staying safe and trying to be you know uh social on social media in that way but really we just me and my husband and my daughter we we've been really really safe and also just because uh mindful for other people too like my mom like it's been hard not being able to be around um people you love mm -hmm. but um staying safe trying to stay positive trying to keep your mind <laughs> and your body fit and healthy with all this going on it's been uh a really interesting challenging time but probably good for all of us in a lot of ways when I when I look at the global perspective of what's important has shifted right? yeah for, for a lot of us it's like oh wow uh, we were as you know as a human race I think we are all real spoiled and now we're like what's important um you know I've seen people from England and stuff it makes me smile when I'm like what are they? <laughs> yes no um, but yeah, so we're just staying really, really healthy and positive, which is, I think, a blessing when you can do that. And then trying to motivate the people around us to do the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because some people are definitely acting a fool when it comes to these masks. So You need to tell me. In LA, I see people out like drunk at bars and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> no, no type of shit. They, they thought Corona just took a break for a second while they was out. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I want to talk about girlfriends but just getting into who you were before girlfriends you after you graduated from high school you moved to Los Angeles so you were you know a very young person in LA yeah uh, what was that experience like for you jumping right from high school it was really um I feel like it was really difficult but at the same time uh I had my brother who lived here so I felt like like I meet people now that just come out to a big city and they don't have anybody. And he was kind of everything. I was sleeping on his couch and I was, <laughs> you know, I was like just trying to get my start. And I was like a theater, um, a theater person. So I came out here expecting it to be a little different than what it is, you know, and mm -hmm. I have a lot of family on the East coast. So uh, LA is its own thing. Like it's, I feel like it's a love hate relationship in the beginning. Yeah. I was like, I love it. And then I was like, oh, no, I hate it. I love the people. And then I was like, oh, but I love it. And oh, the beach. And then, you know, you're like, there's opportunity here as um, an actor. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it's just a big city. It's challenging, all that energy. But when I moved to Canada doing one of my first series, I was living in Vancouver, which was so beautiful, so amazing. But I kind of missed uh, L.A. for the first time. Like, and I was pretty young. I was on a high school show and I was like, I mean, pretending to be in high school, but you know, we're yeah. all, he's really young. And Ryan Gosling was on there. He was 16. It was like all these kids. But I just, for the first time was like, ah, I actually miss it. I miss this mishmash of different types of people. Yes. Um, just forced to get along. And then one of the things that's really special about here that a lot of people don't realize is it's a city where it's built on dreams and um, mm -hmm. they actually respect you when you are an actress or an actor or a producer or someone who's in entertainment 
it's a city that is built on the foundation of people coming in and having a dream and everyone going, you're insane. What are you doing? Yeah. And, and going after that dream and living, uh, and maybe they try it and it doesn't work out, but at least they gave it a shot. And then some of them find that their home isn't in what they thought it would be. It's a different area. Uh, you know, maybe they end up being an editor or, um, something else that isn't what they thought, but they found their home here and they followed their passion. And a lot of us love music, film, TV. And I go to other places in the world and they're kind of like, you're a what? You know, when I was young, I didn't have anything going on. And they were like, uh, and I was like, okay, well, where I'm from, you don't know who's going to be doing what next year or, you know, so you don't just disregard it. And I think that's the coolest part about this very rough, interesting city of angels. No, yeah, I agree. That actually made me think about Mara. Um, for the people who don't know, obviously, Mara is the creator of Girlfriends, as well as so many other dope, amazing, yes. Black Lightning. Um, right. Love is so many things. Oh, man. Um, and she, at first, wanted to do journalism, but then she, you know, made her transition into TV writing. Um, I want to know, do you feel like things have changed as a Black, I'd say as a Black creative versus back in the day versus today, what would you say has changed the most within the industry? I think the best part about what's changed, a lot has changed. Right. But the big, huge thing is what we're doing right now. Yeah. Social media and phones like and technology um, has been like this great equalizer, I think, um, where a lot of us couldn't do anything. We were all dependent on just big studios and networks. And you could be an incredibly talented journalist or a creative of some kind, but you're just desperately wanting to show that you can do this. And if they don't let you in that tiny little pool, you're just stuck. You're just like, what do I do? And now, even like some of the music I've discovered because of, you know, the internet, the social media world, it's so beautiful. You can, you can create it and you can get a following. And then all of a sudden the studios are like, uh, what do we do with this? Like people right. like her or him, you know? Mm -hmm. And that to me is one of the most wonderful things is that you can do it. It's difficult because there's a lot of competition, but at least you can. Like back then, there was like what us big black women. There was so there still is few, but yeah. there was so much less because it was only the studios. And I remember studio, our own uh, show was trying to get on TV Guide, the cover of TV Guide, and they were they wouldn't give it to us. They gave it to Sex and the City, and we all thought they were going to give it to us. And then they said, no, um, black people don't they don't read TV Guide. They don't look at the mag they don't look at that magazine or they don't look at that and I was like do you right. they don't even know we have an what? audience they were like we're not even like on the radar They're like well, who are these black chicks everyone's watching we, you know the studio head was like ignoring um the fans and that voice and I was thinking that can't happen anymore because the internet would just and you know pound them with like what are you doing you know how the women now are like we we want that show or what just happened and I just feel like the voice is more heard because of us being able to connect like this and also just us doing what we're doing right now. I was just talking to another actor about this and it was amazing because I was saying back in the day when we were on the show, the studio created our image and sort of magazines and a few interviews were what you thought you knew the actor. And there was no way for you to say, hey, no, I don't really think that. Or here's my voice. Or here's what I represent. Or here's what I stand for politically. And all of the, all of the attention that has come to Black Lives Matter, like, that couldn't happen. Yeah. And now it can happen because of this uh, platform and that we can connect. So I'm just so happy that that's not shut down yet. I don't know how many years that will go on. I think there might be a time where the government steps in more and more and more and controls it more. But right now is very difficult to control and yeah. we're connecting and we're making our voices heard and uh, i'm just so grateful for that because all of the social change that's happened is because of people connecting and mainly it's been the internet absolutely this, this is the this is the revolution right here <laughs> yeah and it will be streamed <laughs> yeah no absolutely <laughs> pandemic people have had time to rest and, and consume things more um so I, yeah i totally agree for the people who have questions for Persia, I see y'all. Hi, I love you too. 
Yes, right. I know it's right. Give her all the love and admiration. <laughs> um, like you said, you've been in uh, different shows, um, successful shows, but we know and love you for Lynn on Girlfriend. Um, oh, thank her, you. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. When you first read Lynn on paper, uh, what were your initial thoughts and has that changed? I know, I'm sure, I mean, I don't know if you've been binging it at, at, you know, for the people who don't know, it's on Netflix right now. You can watch it as much as you like. But have you gone back and watched it? And what were your original thoughts about Lynn versus today? Um, I did, re on the, on the um, 11th, we did a thing with Mara and we did a Twitter party where we were watching and I rewatched the first few episodes with my husband. It was so funny because it was <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i remember every moment but seeing it years later because it's been forever since i watched those episodes because by the time it was over eight see you're hundreds of episodes almost 200 episodes you're now watching like i remember more the last like three seasons and mm -hmm. i was like oh my god i was a hot mess i was, <laughs> I was a hot mess and that's why i love lynn because she was a hot mess and i was like oh this this is not even like, this is easy because I'm not playing like a big stretch from what I am inside. And that was so much fun. And they, they actually catered. I read a lot of it. And I remember my agent was, we were joking. We're like, uh, said tree hugging <clears throat> Scorpio. She's light skin and gets crap for it because people, you know, give her a hard time for that. And I was like, oh, this sounds like my life. Like what? Mm -hmm. uh, that, what Anyway, and then reading the, the lines and then the script, it was kind of fun because they always gave me the odd stuff, mm -hmm. you know, like anything politically charged. I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. Like, right. You know, I want it. There's, but we, might, we won't talk about the president or something or, you know, and I'm like, I will. <laughs> no. Make fun of me. I'm cool with it. And then it was also cool because Mara let me be, um, which is very, was very difficult being light skinned black woman and people constantly go, what are you? What are you? And you're like, well, I'm mixed. And that's a thing in our community, but not everybody knows what that is. And I was like, okay, this is so cool because I asked to be um, biracial for Lynn to be biracial and mm -hmm. she allowed it. And there wasn't, there was only one other biracial character on TV. And I think it was Jennifer Beale and the L word and that she fought for that too. And mm -hmm. asked for the, and, so they allowed that. And I was like, these are conversations I want to be having, even if it's funny ones or silly ones about not fitting in or finding your identity. I think that's important, all of it. And yeah, um, yeah so I was always a risk taker. I love the millennials and Generation Z because all of this uh -oh. we cut now. Out. Yeah. I think we cut out a little bit, but I think. Uh... Oh, sorry. No, no, you're good. Um, I love your generation is what I was saying and all these young people because I feel like I relate more and I always have like all the way back then mm -hmm. to this generation I fit in more with because Lynn was so out there but now that's not that out there you know what I mean back then it was. I was going to say Lynn was the person that I related to the most growing up because I was like no this is wrong you know she was liberated. like seriously. I would say the millennials, we watched our parents watch it. So yeah. at the time, we didn't understand every single concept that was in the right. show, but we know what character we related to the most and their, you know, their mannerisms, their behavior. And Lynn was my girl. I would say that I was part of Joan, but not like the boy crazy part of Joan, but yeah. just professionalism. Um, but yeah, no, Lynn was, to me, she was the Renaissance woman. Um, I wanted to bring up actually on Lynn, Mara had said that she created Lynn because she was the black woman that she didn't understand. She didn't understand that woman who didn't necessarily have all the answers together, but she was, you know, like, like I said, sexually liberated. She was a freedom fighter. She just wanted more and better for the world that she was living in. Right. Um, what are your thoughts on, or, or like you said, I guess that's interesting to know that Mara, she gave you guys the reins to create and mold your characters um, to, to your liking. Well, not, not everybody. I think I got a little extra because it was so different. Mm -hmm. and she said, can I borrow a couple of things from you, like the music and just certain things. And every now and then I'd have to talk to her and them about the modern mentality of the boheme of the current time. And like they might make her sexually liberated, but there was a point where, for example, one of the writers had written in that 
you know, she was unsafe, that she had unsafe sex randomly with random people. I was like, what? I was like, mm -hmm. no. I said, that's like some 1970s stuff. Like, mm -hmm. Now women are like very aware of taking care and protecting themselves. It's not about just... And it was like kind of this really interesting balance. I was like, we care about things, but we're also very open-minded to learning the information that's out there. It's not like just, you know, bleeding heart, throwing flowers and don't think, don't, you know, it's a very different way of being um, when you're that, you don't have it all figured out, but you're constantly assessing things and being very open to information and learning and taking what you like and leaving what you don't. And whether it's music or culture, you don't fit in the box that society has been putting on women, uh, all of us really, but particularly I feel like a woman of color, it, there was more of a box. People think you're this and you go, not necessarily, let me make that decision. And that was, that was fun because they'd, sometimes we would get into it and she'd be like, well, what about what do you think about? And I was like, yeah, but no. And they're like, oh my God, this is so hard to understand um, that, that type of generational, uh, the, the thinking is yeah. just different. And it was really sometimes challenging because if, if there's, I had to pick my battles, you can't do everything you want, but it was really great in the way that um, we as a cast really spoke our voice and they would listen and the writers, Mar gave those reins, but also we would, like debate about how far we push it and you know and then of course just being kind of out there was fun like when it's like what okay fine <laughs> yeah so I was gonna say you mentioned that um during you guys' ET live um with you and the rest of the cast and you were saying that there were times where you felt like you spoke up too much and you were fighting for the you know black women's stories and our narratives what would you what would what would some of those things be obviously again well, congratulations to the cast and crew. Like you guys are amazing people, but those stories matter when you're trying to fight for, um, like you said, the narratives of black women and our stories, because it's so sensitive. And if we put something out into the world, oftentimes the world just takes what they see in media and they, they generalize it, you know, across an entire race of people. Right, exactly. So, I mean, there were so many, cause we're talking about eight years. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes, yeah, I think I would just get so heated um, because I care so much and I was so young and I, I mean, I'm still like that, but I just, I wasn't fitting in the world of like, Hey, go do your lines. You're an actor. I was like, no way mm -hmm. I'm representing here. Like this means yeah. something to me and you want me to just perpetuating certain stereotypes about, um, black women being, uh, all being jealous against, uh, black men who date white women or, it was like, I was like, that's a per situation thing. That's not like right. I just put a blanket on that, you know, and call every white woman a trophy. There was lines that I was like, ah. Oh. And then there was drugs, things that I, I felt really uh, protective of the generation that like Lynn, I wouldn't, I said, no, Lynn wouldn't just go all willy nilly do drugs and ecstasy and whatever. And I was like, no, 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 no. Have you read about what some of this stuff does? And they're like, uh, no, it's just fun. We're just going to pop it in. And I was like, so there's stuff like that that was really politically um, charged where I'm like, I'm speaking to a bunch of teenage girls or, or young women and I mm -hmm. just throw it out there like it's nothing. I said, you don't understand the power of that influence. I think that mm -hmm. it's really important that you show this, the dialogue or the repercussions or you know, we talk about it and they were open to it. They were like, okay. The, uh, the episode, for example, when uh, Joan ends up in the hospital because she ends up taking some drugs with this young guy she's dating. And they, you know, those type of things got shifted because of conversations we had. And it was not going to have those repercussions. It was a different direction it was going in. And mm -hmm. it was things like that. And then dialogues about, you know, just people coming in and saying things and uh, using certain words about women that we were like, okay, we need to have that talk. And yeah, I, yeah, I was really, it, it was hard because I was just so um, just political and, and it meant so, and still does, but like, I remember mm -hmm. saying to one producer who got really mad because I wouldn't say something. And I won't say what it is, but it was right. something that was very, very bad and uncool for us. And he was like, okay, you're an actor. Normally we just say stuff. But I remember um, I was, I had an expression back then. And I said, you know, 
I'm, my services are for hire, but my soul is not for sale. So Here. this is a very fickle line in our industry because not everybody felt that way, especially back then. You're just happy to be working. You're happy to be there. But yeah. it was like, there, there's also this other thing that means so much to me. And that was difficult, especially being playing the biracial one. You know, yeah. there, there's a line where you can quickly, it could quickly get really dark um, mm -hmm. uh, emotionally in the sense of how it's depicted. And, you know, so that was, that was fun, but, but yeah. very challenging to have those conversations. You're like, I don't even want to talk about my personal belief system at work, but now it's all on the stage and now it's all part of our lives. So you do have to, um, back then more than now, because things are more liberal, things are more out there. But I mean, I did get, um, I did get some hate for it. I got hate for being um, open about uh, homosexuality, um, being non-homophobic, -hom I would say, and being very liberal. I got a lot of, um, <laughs> a yeah. lot of hate from the Christian community. And I was like, in real life, I'm, I'm a single mom. I'm not doing anything. This is my character, but I'm still getting the hate because I'm representing that. And I was like, wow, that's, that was intense and kind of surprising. It, it was a little hurtful. But, but honestly, though, like that gives so many people reassurance to keep on fighting for the things that they know are, you know, or fighting against the things that they know that are wrong. And especially during that time, I can only imagine what a production um, uh, environment looks like versus what day. You know, we have so many people coming forward saying, like, I'm tired of the misconduct, you know, different different things so um no i applaud you that's awesome that you were that person at that point who was like no i'm not going for it because more people need to be like that so i i definitely give you all the kudos. Uh, thank um, you no of it course. feels good to talk about it now because at the time i was like oh what am i doing i don't want to make any you know we don't and, and mar was fighting for things too it was like ruffling feathers is a hard thing when you're just you know right. Right. You don't have that much going on. You're just like, okay, I'm not wanting to make everyone angry, but she was just always challenging things too. And so, yeah, she, it was a hot, it was a hot, <laughs> a hot set sometimes. Yeah, no, it sucks that we have to apologize for being offended when the other person offends you, you know, like, I know. It, yeah, it's, it's a crazy world, but I'm glad we're, you know, transitioning out of that mindset. Um, it's amazing. And it's literally because of this year with this pandemic. I mean, yeah. I think I know all of us. I'm sure you know what I mean. Where this, I was trying to explain it to, because I have, you know, a lot of uh, white relatives who yeah. are very well-meaning and loving and kind. And I was like, it's really interesting to sometimes explain that I've actually gotten used to like the different levels of racism or sexism. I just got used to it. And you just, you, like you say, I've gotten used to tippy toeing around like, oh, I don't want to offend you by bringing up this stuff. I don't want to, you know, and I'm very, since I'm all very much about peace and love and everybody doing their own thing, that even makes it worse. So you're kind of like very much not wanting to stir the pot. And also since I've spent my whole life dealing with those issues and those debates, um, you reach a point, uh, where I think a lot of people have reached a point not even realizing it. We're just, you just unconditionally going, you just go along with a lot of things that are not okay. And mm -hmm. you, it's, it's, I just feel like a lot of us have. And now this new thing of opening up that dialogue and going, yes, you're right. Like I was doing that a long time ago and I was getting so much crap for it. But yeah. it's so, then I put a lot of that away. I stopped being as you know, and also the, the conversation wasn't as needed in, in other shows. That was, that was a special platform. But I mean, I think it's really beautiful that your generation and the generation, um, the even younger generation under you are very intolerant to injustice and things that so many of us just got used to. We're just like, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about like sexual harassment. I was like, I actually got used to a yeah. certain level and I just, I'm very tough. So I'd be like, hey, like smack a guy who tries right. something. I'd be like, back off, <laughs> you're just such an idiot. But someone else, another girl might be, I've, t I've taken girls to production and gotten guys in trouble and like, you need to tell them what happened. Like he right. can't do that to you or a guy like in a scene you go under the sheet with him and he's naked or he grabs you. Like this is, mm -hmm. we get used to this. And I'm like, no, I would have punched him. 
said, stop it, you're an idiot, and told the producer. But I'm like that kind of outward person. A lot of girls would just be like, <gasps> frozen, crying, yeah. come to me. And I remember, I don't know how many times I've dealt with that kind of thing where I'm like, oh my God, again. But you're, you know, we're now in a, in a world where that's not okay. Thank God. Yeah. You know, finally. It's like, finally. Yeah. <laughs> we just need to keep it there and keep moving in that direction, you know? Yeah. No, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree. Um, and it's just even thinking about that, that's like, oh, I can only, right? I don't want to imagine or, you know, even relate to it. But again, I applaud you for being the people who are one of the people who are outspoken about it. Um, so uh, 20 years later, I think it's amazing. For, I have not seen the episode yet, but I think it was so dope that you guys all came back together for on um, Blackish. What was oh, that? Oh, that was so much fun. Yes. And there's a lot of people who used to work on girlfriends who work on Blackish. So, oh. yeah. Okay. And yeah. so, um, after you did, so 20 years later, so what was that like? And then also, too, a lot of people feel like we didn't get a proper farewell, which I don't, I agree. I don't think we got a proper farewell for girlfriends. Is there a possibility at all that there will maybe be a reboot? Not, I don't think, maybe not a reboot, but just even a reunion episode at all. Oh, I hope so. We, me and the girls are open to it. And I mean, what we're hoping is maybe because it's on Netflix, they'll know that that would be really fun to do like, maybe like a little mini series to wrap up what happened. The girls come back yep. together. Or we talk, like you could just do a Netflix mini special event, two, three episodes, and it would be a tie up. So I really hope so. We have been talking about it, but we don't own the show. And right people have come up to us. The beautiful thing is we've heard from girls like on the street, they're like, I still want closure. And I'm like, wow, that, <laughs> that was not closed. It's, it's amazing. So that would be so much fun. Yes. Plus the girls still, we were all joking, going, we, st we want, we still got it. We still got the energy. We want to do it rather than wait till, I don't know. <laughs> you know like, I know we're hanging on by a thread. <laughs> not even girl. Y'all look amazing. If <laughs> That is live with all of them. Y'all look like this was yesterday. Okay. <laughs> it's clean. I'm trying to, I need that. That's that black don't crack for real. Y'all literally look amazing. Aw, thank yes. you. I mean, I, girl. Well, I, but we yeah. Can't hang in there forever. So we got to make that show. We got to make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Petition, y'all. We are rooting for it. Um. So. Uh, I know that you produced some things too. Uh, you did Earthlings, which was narrated by Joaquin Phoenix. Um, yes. Are there any other projects and also music? Or do you think that you'll be making any more music and all, as well as producing any more projects? Well, I have something that just came out on Amazon Prime. It's just a couple of shorts, um, a short oh. one called Juice Truck, which is silly fun. I, I'm doing more comedy lately because things have just been so dark. Mm -hmm. I, really uh feel like i need to laugh and um so yes and i um, have been doing music and i'm gonna release the songs from girlfriends and reproduce some of them and ha add a couple extra things on there so that's gonna be fun because there's all those songs that were from back then yeah. and then i've been doing soundtrack music so i'm gonna put another album out that's various very ethereal kind of beautiful um soundtracky stuff which i really love and what I'm really loving the most is um, I have two different projects with my husband and our production company that we're working on. And one is a comedy film that's kind of like a Thelma and Louise adventure mm. um, that's sort of, but, but it manages black women and it's now. Yeah. So it's really fun um, called Adult Adolescent. And then there's another um, short that's coming out in about, it's like a mini series uh, comedy thing that's coming out in a couple of weeks and it's called Dance On and I play a very different character. <laughs> it's okay. like a parody of a dance reality show. And that's once again, it's just fun. Mm -hmm. Very fun because um, we need to laugh really bad. So Dance On will be on Amazon Prime and uh, Juice Trek is on Amazon Prime right now. Yes, okay. See, so look out for all of those projects, y'all. Like that's, um, I, I'm so excited. No, seriously, Juice Truck. I'm tabling or noting that mentally. Yeah, um, that one directed and written by my daughter, Mecca, and it was just so much fun. It's just these girls that have the Juice Truck in Santa Monica, and it's just my character is absolutely out there. Mecca wrote it. And she writes the weirdest. If you could imagine someone writes odd characters for me, because normally I don't get to play, um, you know, 
just extreme. A lot of times they want you to look kind of cute. Mm -hmm. just not that. <laughs> yeah. No, so I'm, it's fun. Cause you, and you named your album after your daughter, correct? Yeah, I did. Yeah. That's awesome. And you guys have the, well, you guys have the same birthday month. Yes. Do you guys yes. celebrate together or like, and what Halloween um, costumes or, I mean, mm -hmm. pandemic? You know what? It's like, you know how you don't want your mom coming along for Halloween? <laughs> She's not letting me come along for Halloween in a long time. <laughs> but maybe this year because we're on so restricted, you yeah. know, environment. But um, we'll do something fun for Halloween. I don't know what I'm going to be this year. I, have you picked out your thing? I, okay, so I'm in between either I really want to do Kill Bill. That's like what I've been trying to look, do. Look what I'm wearing. I know, I know. Oh, my God. Look it. I've got my Kill Bill on. Oh, yeah. my God. That's, that's, that's perfect. So I really want to do Kill Bill, either Kill Bill or... Um, I really so my sister. I'm in, I'm in Kansas City now, but I'm I live in LA. But my sister and I really want to do Ashley and Hillary. I want to be Hillary, but she's older than me, so I feel like she should be Hillary. But <laughs> I I really want to kill that one at one point in my life. But yeah, Kill Bill's like kind of in my mind right now. I know. I just need a sword. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, yes, I think you could do the Kill Bill, but you know both are good depending if you're, you're with your sister. So yeah, exactly. So we'll have to like merge that together. Um, I'm gonna see if we have any uh, questions. Uh, well, I know my kill bill. Like someone's liking my kill bill. Thank you. <laughs> I know. Huge uh, Jack outfit. Um, let's so let's see. So someone said, "Why doesn't Netflix have the last seasons of Girlfriends?" I don't know if that's something that you might know. They're but... supposed to have the last seasons. It's supposed yeah. to be all eight. That's news to me. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Maybe refresh see on your netflix and see if they do have it um yeah i i'll find out i thought it was supposed to be all seasons i know that um um the last couple of seasons you know how the the union changed rules mm -hmm. so i'm wondering um i know it was different because we were on different contracts um for the last couple of seasons it just mm. it, every so many years sag does new uh contracts so i'm curious I'm gonna have to look into that. I I was told by Tracy and some other some of the other cast that it was all eight. Yeah, I was gonna say because I mean I think I did hear someone say about four seasons or maybe they were four seasons into it. So I'll definitely have to go back and look. But we'll definitely you know we'll spill the tea when we find out that information. Um, yes. Ask a question that I have for you because I don't want to keep you all day. Um, okay. So the first thing that I noticed online as soon as Girlfriends dropped was again my generation saying like oh my gosh these girls didn't even have it together and they're in their twenties, you know? And I feel like your twenties is such a, it's such an over the hump kind of, you know, time period within your life where you're like, you're young, but at the same time, you're kind of like getting to this point where it's like, ah, right, let me get myself together. And right. what was your reaction to it being one girlfriends being dropped on Netflix? And what's the best advice that you would give to black women in their twenties? Ooh, that's good. Okay. Um, reaction was oh i'm so happy it's on netflix because that's the platform uh that we didn't get to have back then mm -hmm. and people shouldn't have to go buy it i think people should be able to stream it and it's we're commenting on things that are still current to this day um issues of race and color and uh classism and there's just and then of course all the smorgasbord of stuff that lynn deals with which is um, you know, sexuality, and we deal with AIDS, we deal with things that are, I feel like it's nice to see that it has that platform finally. Um, and then advice for women, I would say that the biggest thing, like I said, it was a bit of a hot mess um, when I got on the show, because just like our characters, um, you're still finding your way, I think. But the beautiful part is like you say, you have that energy, mm -hmm. and you have that passion. And that's something that I would never let go of the passion for life, for living your dreams, for uh, justice, for uh, things that you care about. And I think that does tend to dissipate for some people if they get uh, jaded at the fact that the world isn't perfect. But now yeah. people have this wonderful uh, vitality and endless energy uh, to still feel. Uh, and I think that's a really important thing to hold on to. 
Mm -hmm. and not let go of because people would be telling me my whole life oh you know what when you're my age you won't care are you this and that and I was like I don't know let me see about that and, mm -hmm. and that happened <laughs> I was like <laughs> it's not true mm -hmm. not true you don't have to get dour because happiness is an actual choice and I know that sounds outrageous but it is true you can choose to look at the any situation or any person or obstacle that you find and you can choose to look at it differently. You can choose to be in a state of gratitude for everything you do have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that keeps you young forever is that choice to how you perceive things will shift how you look physically over time and how you are health wise. It's mm -hmm. actually more in your hands than you realize because it's, it's interesting my mom was having a big um political fight with a couple of her neighbors um you know the whole conservative republican and democrat thing has been so heated and she yeah. loves her neighbors but she was getting <laughs> into it and she was like so they finally made a truce and one of the neighbors said listen um let's not let this divide us because there's too much division right now in the world and how you affect each other and people that you care about in your own circle is important too. Mm -hmm. And my mom was saying, it's true because every person that you feel completely different than every obstacle that you face with the challenges we're going through today, you can think about all the things that you don't agree with the whole world or them on, or you can also focus on the things that you do agree mm -hmm. with for every 10 things that you disagree with someone, there's probably a couple of things that you do agree with them on that you can have harmony and you can have perception, you can have gratitude and then still work towards our goals. But how we are in here is just so important. I think young people are more stressed out than ever right now. You're, you're dealing with something that, you know, uh, most of us didn't have to deal with. This is your world and uh, I just feel like it's it's a very important thing to keep your spirit and your heart and your mind a, in a place that is of gratitude and optimism as you battle all of these things. So that's my youth advice for the uh, 20, 20 something and, you know, and all the young ones out there that are yeah. you know, going through this. I think just keeping your heart in the right place is so important. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Persia. For that's that gym and also again flowers glory praise to the yeah. girlfriends cast mara bracket kill you are literally do the dopest um and yeah thank you so much for giving us girlfriends for the culture oh. for black people for the world thank I'm you finally getting your um your recognition because you deserve it all the way so oh, thank you and thank yeah. you for doing this because like i said you're the future this is it Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I hope you um, enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Where is the buzz? Where is the buzz? You said we used to be in the same